Hey, do me a favor and look to somebody beside you and say, you're grounded. Go ahead, tell somebody, you're grounded. How, in fact, how many of you probably used those words this past week with a kid? Raise your hand, right? Anybody? All right, I got a couple of people. You're grounded. What does it mean to be grounded? You're rooted. What does it mean if you're a kid and you're grounded? It stinks, right? What does it mean? You're not going anywhere, right? You're grounded. It means you're, you're, you're stuck. What does it mean if you're flying, if the flat's been grounded? What does it mean? There's weather or whatever it may be. You're, you're grounded. You're not going up. You're, you're staying where you are. You're, you're, you're grounded. And so for the next few weeks, the series that we're in is going to be called what does it mean to be grounded, to be grounded in God's Word, to be grounded in, in, our, in our lives, to be grounded financially, to be grounded in our relationships, to be grounded emotionally, right? So many different things, but we're, we'll line it all up to be grounded in, in God's Word and, and how that plays out. So we're going to be looking at how we're grounded in the Word for the next few weeks, actually leading up to Easter. We're seven Sundays away from Easter this weekend. But who's counting, right? Seven, seven Sundays. That's For us as a church, that's like the Super Bowl, right? So we're already planning what we're going to do, how, how is that all going to play out. So we're actually starting those meetings to, to get all of that finalized because it's, it's right around the corner, and it's a great time for us as Christians to celebrate. It's a great time to invite people. Right? People will come to church on Easter, so it's a great time to invite people maybe that don't go to church and, and invite them to come be a part of it. But leading up to Easter, for the next several weeks, we're going to take a journey through this series called Grounded, and we're going to look at some things specifically with the Bible. For instance, how do we integrate the Bible into our life? Here's another one. This is a big one that we'll get to in a couple of weeks. How do we interpret the Bible? Well, you read it, and I get this, but if I read it, I think it means this. Who's right? Yeah, that's a touchy subject. We're going to get to that. What does it mean to be grounded? How do we interpret Scripture? How do we, how do we integrate it into our lives? How, all of those things we're going to look at, how do we get grounded? Because there's a Scripture, there's a story in the Bible that Jesus ended, the, when he ended the Sermon on the Mount, one of the most famous sermons, or the most famous sermon in the Bible, we find, and, and by telling a story. Some of you may know what the story is, but he tells a story. There were two guys that went out to build house, build a house, and one built their house on the rock foundation. The other one built it on sand. What happens? The tsunami comes, right? The wind and the rain and the water and the flood and, and all of that. And as a result, the one who built their home on the rock was able to sustain the storm but the one who built their home in the sand, what happened? It, it crumbled. It fell apart. Wasn't able to hold on. And so the question is, how do we, how do we build on that type of foundation? How do we get grounded in such a way that when the storms come, that, that we're prepared? There, there's a verse in Matthew chapter 7. You don't have to turn there. But the scripture says in verse 24, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. So we hear it, and he says if we put it into practice, and we're going to teach on that, how to do that through this series, and even today, to put that into practice, it is that, it says it's like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So how do I build my home on the rock? How do I build my life on the rock? So we're going to look at that, because we don't know what's going to happen in 2020. We don't know what's going to happen in the, the, the days coming. You don't know what's going to happen in your family in the next few months. You don't know what's going to happen by the end of this year with our health, relationships, financially. You don't know. We don't know what 2021 is going to look like. 2022, 2023, five years from now. There could be some in this room that's no longer here. We don't know. But here's what I do know. Every one of us in this room are going to go through some storms. There's not any of us in this room who are exempt from the storms in life. Relationships, your health, 
emotional storms, financial storms, all of the storms. And if you're not built on the rock, the foundation will begin to shift and move and it'll crumble. If you build your life on the opinions of others, you're going to crumble. If you build your life on this culture that we live in, it's going to crumble. If you build your life on the popular opinion of what's popular right now, it, it's going to crumble. If you build your life on any of those things, it's going to fall apart. But if you build your life on the unchanging truth, you can be grounded. So how do I build my life on the Bible? And the answer is this. We're going to look at this this morning. We have your, your senses that helps you operate, right? What are, what, what are your five senses? Anybody know? You're hearing, smelling, what else? Taste, see, and what? Touch, right? So, so we learn on a daily basis based on our senses. Some of you are like, well, I know some people don't have much sense at all, right? But that's okay. But we, we make our decisions based on our senses, what we see, what we smell, you know, how, what we touch. All of those things helps us come up with ideas about what we think about something or the way that we, we see something. And everything you know, everything that you experience in life comes through those five senses. So how can we use those senses in God's Word in order to get a grasp and be grounded in what He wants us to learn? And so if you do have your Bibles, you can turn to the book of James 1, James chapter 1, and we'll look at verse 19 and following. And I'm going to give you some other verses along the way, but James 1, 19 will be kind of the foundation of that, of what we'll look at this morning. But how do we use those senses in order to have a foundation to be grounded? So I want to give them to you. So if you're taking notes, um, you'll want to write these down, or if you want to take pictures of the screen when you see the notes come up, it, it, whatever, whatever way you can help be reminded of these, they're important. Because it's part of us learning to be more grounded in the life that we live. So number one is this. I must allow my heart to hear it. Allow my, there's a typo there. You're like, what is that word? I saw it on the back screen. I'm like, wait a minute. That's, that was my fault probably when I emailed him in. So allow my heart, or, or I'm sorry, allow my, it's ears. I'm not even to the heart yet. That's further down. That's how bad that is. I'm like, man, where am I going to go with this? This is, this is your sixth sense, right? <laughs> like, what? Allow my ears to hear it. Yeah, that's my typo. Allow my ears to hear it. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, Faith comes from what? Hearing the message. And the message is heard through what? Through the words of Christ. Through the words of Christ, through the scripture, through the Bible reading. So I have to allow my ears to hear. That's what you're doing now. If you're here this morning, if you're watching online, you're allowing your ears to to hear the message, which is important. It's one of the senses. I have to allow my ears to be able to, to hear it. When you're hearing the word, your faith is being built. You're being encouraged. You leave here and you're like, man, I was encouraged by that. It's because your faith is built partially on what you hear. So cha James chapter 1, verses 19, I actually challenged some of our leaders this morning in our devotional to memorize this. And, uh, and we're going to kind of build on that, and we'll get to that and talk about memorizing and the importance of studying and reading and all of those things. But in James chapter 1, verse 19 says this, everyone should be quick to what? To listen. How many of you know somebody that needs to take time and listen, right? It, no elbows throwing, but we all know somebody who needs to listen, right? To be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become what? Angry. For man's anger does not bring about righteous, the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is prevalent, and humbly do what? Humbly what? Accept the word. Look at this next word behind accept the word. Humbly accept the word what? Planted, grounded, right? Grounded, planted. In deep roots, right? To be planted, to be grounded, planted in you, which what can it do? It can save you. 
if this word can save you, then don't, don't you think we need to keep it close? Absolutely. To be planted in you, to be able to be grounded, to be planted. It's interesting, often the Bible, as we read through Scripture, it, it, talks, it compares the Scripture to a seed. Being planted, the seed, the Word of God, and the soul of our hearts, right? To, to, to allow it to grow, to be nourished, for it to, the, 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 it to grow and develop within us in order to grow into fruit. It's interesting that you can take a seed and plant it in three different places and get three different things, right? I, I can plant a watermelon seed in one place and, and it may become a huge watermelon. I can plant it in another and it may be a small watermelon. And I can maybe plant it even in another location and there be no watermelon. Why is that? It's the soil. It's the location. It's the preparation that's been made in order to receive it and to be able to develop it. The soul has to be prepared. The same for you to be able to hear the Word of God. Your heart has to be prepared. For instance, some of you may come to church and, man, you woke up late. The kids weren't getting ready. You're frustrated. You're telling them, you know, we're walking out the door in five minutes, and if you're not, you're going to be left behind. You know, you're, you're, they get in the car. You know, they're fussing on the way here. You know, perhaps a Sunday it's raining. You're like, man, it's raining, and our parking lot's not even paved yet, and you're getting out, and you're trying to figure it all out. And by the time you get in here, your blood pressure is through the roof. And as a result... You're like, i got to settle in here. And as a result, your heart hasn't been prepared, and it's hard to receive because you're frustrated because of everything else that's led up to that moment. Our heart has to be in a position to be able to receive what God has prepared for us. And that's why two people can come to church, set them side by side, and at the end of the service, you have a conversation, and one of them's going, man, that was a powerful experience this morning through the worship and through the Word, and man, God really spoke to me and some things going on. And then the other person go, I didn't get anything out of that. What's the difference? They heard the same message, same music, same everything. It could be the fact that their soul wasn't prepared to be able to receive what was being planted in them. And so preparation is significant, right? To be grounded, you have to prepare the soul in order to receive the word that God has for you. In order to hear God's word, you have to have good reception. How many of you sometimes, you, you, even though we have cell phones, how many of you live out in the country where you get bad reception on your cell phone? Raise your hand. Anybody besides, I mean, we don't live like out in the country, but man, there are certain places in my yard, it'll immediately drop my phone call. Let me ask you this. This is, a, this is a good survey. How many of you no longer have a home phone? All you have is a cell phone. Raise your hand. Wow. Look around the room. It's crazy, right? So you depend on it to work. And so you've, if you ever go by my yard and you see me you know, I, it's because the reception's bad, and I'm trying to get in position to get good reception. Can you hear me? Like, let me hang up and call you again, because it's, it's all over the place. There's just certain places that it goes out. It's like a black hole in my yard. There's like a certain area I know if I go, I get bad reception. But in order to hear God, you got to have good reception. It's like your, your car battery. Man, it's got to have good reception. If it's, if it's barely connected, I mean, your car won't start you got to have good receptors. It's got to be clean. It's got to be ready to, in order to be able to receive it. And so for good reception, there's a couple of things you and I need according to what those verses we just read. For good reception, here's what you need to be. Number one, you need to be quiet. Be quick to listen and slow to speak. Let me give you another good reception. You need to be calm. Slow to become what? Angry. If you have a good reception, you got to be calm. You got to be still. How about this? You got to be clean. <clears throat> Get rid of all the moral filth and evil that is so prevalent. 
to have good reception, I have to do some repenting to get my heart positioned to be able to receive. And then another one is this, is to be humble. Humbly accept the word that's what? Planted. Humbly accept the word that is planted in you, which can do what? Save you. Humbly. So being quiet, being calm, being clean, and being humble. you got to have good reception in order to hear. If you want to be grounded, it starts with what you hear, right? Being grounded, listening, being able to receive. But there's a problem with just hearing. 95%, they say that 95% of what you hear will be forgotten within 72 hours. 95% of everything you hear on a daily basis will be forgotten within 72 hours. Which means this, by Wednesday, what did that preacher say? I have no idea. Right? What was that song we did Sunday? I don't know. Because we forget. So if we forget, if we forget 95% of what we hear, if the only time you spend with God is listening to what we have to say, you're in trouble. You're not grounded. Because by Wednesday, you have no clue. Right? So if I'm going to do more than listen, because evidently listening is not very powerful in and of itself. You've got to have more connectors. So not only do I need to allow my ears, or the hearers, or whatever that word was I had, not only allow my ears to hear it, but number two, I need to allow my eyes to what? To read it. The senses, right? You know, not only what I hear, but it's what I see. I need to allow my eyes to be able to, to read it. Verse 22 and following, in that same text in James 1, I said 19 through 25, this is verse 22 and following. Do not merely listen to the word. In other words, it's not, you can't just listen. It's got to be connectors beyond that. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks how? Intently into the perfect law that gives freedom. And how often does he do it? Continues to do this. Continues what? Not forgetting what he has heard, but what? Doing it. Watch this. He will be what? Blessed in what he does. This is one of the only verses we find. There's only a few where it actually gives a promise, if you do this, you will be blessed in what you do. If you will do this, intently look, continue to look, not forgetting. Not forgetting, meaning it's more than just what you hear. Do not merely just hear it because you're going to forget it. You have to continually look at it, look at it with our eyes, continually do it, not forgetting, but doing it. The Scripture says that you will be blessed. It talks about the mirror, right? The, oftentimes the Bibles re, re, you know, refer to the Scriptures as a mirror. How many of you looked in the mirror this morning? Raise your hand. If you didn't, we can tell, right? I mean, everybody, right? everybody looks in the mirror before you leave the house, probably. You know, make sure, make sure everything's good to go. Make sure your hair's in place. If you don't have any hair, make sure, you know, like, I don't know, like, there's no crumbs, like you're eating something. I don't know. Everybody looks in the mirror, right, at some point or another. Why do you look in a mirror? To see what you look like. The Bible says, teaches us that Scripture's like looking in a mirror. We look at it to reflect, to see what we look like, to see what's here. It's a reflection. We're able to look in, intently, it, in, and it reflects who we are and what we need to work on. I need to allow my eyes to continually read it so I don't deceive myself into thinking that I'm okay. Just by coming to church, I'm good. And deceive myself because I've heard it. It has to go beyond just what I hear to what I read, to what I see. You have to dig deeper in order to be 
grounded. Let's move on to the next one. Not only do I allow my eyes to read it, there's a census, right? But let's look at the next two. I allow my hands and my mouth to research it. When you research something, right, you, you touch it, you want to look at it, you want to study it, you look at the Word, you write down notes, you use your mouth. How do you use your mouth? You talk about it, right? I talk about it in small groups. I'm going to research talking about those things that I'm looking at talking about what it is that, that I'm learning, talk about it with others to be able to build community and to build discipleship. And so I research with what I say. I talk about it when I'm at work, or I talk about it with my friends. I, I talk about it with others, and, and, and I write down things. It's, 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 it's allowing it to be a part of our, our life, and it's writing down what I learned, talking about what I learned. John 5.39 in the New Living Translation says, You search the Scriptures because you believe they give you eternal life. And the Scriptures point to me. Searching the Scriptures means you study. It's to take what you read and go a little deeper, right? To take time to really study beyond just reading. It says here, it talks about the people of Beret that were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica. He says, they listened eagerly to Paul's message. They searched the scriptures. Watch this. Day after day. And they, what they were doing is they were checking up on Paul and Silas to see if they were really teaching the truth. It's important for you to, to study to make sure that what you're hearing is true. And not just taking someone's word for it. But spending time to, to study it. Spending time to, to search through it. And, and to allow it to be part of your conversation. So we go from just what we hear to what we see to what we actually write down and, and what we're touching, what we're looking at, and then what we speak. It's all developing in us in order to be grounded. And when we do that, we will begin to allow our minds, which is the next point, to remember it. I will allow my mind to remember it. The way that we remember it's not just based on what we hear, but it's also what we see, it's what we touch, it's what we talk about. All of these things help us to be able to remember. Verse 25, the man who looks intently into the perfect law, what does it say? And continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, says that he will be blessed in what he does. If you're serious about your faith, if you're genuinely wanting to grow and to develop and have a, a, a firm foundation in your family, in your home, in your marriage, in all aspects of your life, listen to me. One of the single greatest habits that you can develop is to memorize some scripture, to allow that to be part of who you are, to study and to have some verses memorized, maybe verses you memorized as a kid. Why? Because the Bible may not be around when you need it. In the moment when you're being tempted by that situation, there's a good chance the Bible's not going to be laying in your hand. In a moment when you're at work and you're about to fly off the handle, there's a good chance the Bible's not going to be opened up to that favorite verse there to remind you of what you need to do. When you're in the car, when you leave church today, <laughs> I don't have to say anymore, right? You get it. The Bible's probably in the trunk. And you don't need to be reading it while you're driving anyway. But in those moments... And don't be all spiritual and tech savvy. Well, I've got the Bible app. You're not going to pull that up. No. When you're tempted, you're going to be ready to lose it. And therefore, when we know what the Scripture says, we're able to remember it and say, but I know this to be true. I need to guard my heart in this situation. I don't need to get close here. I need to avoid this room. I need to avoid whatever it may be. And it's important the significance of remembering it. And you may say, Benji, I have a terrible memory and I can't remember anything. Listen to me. You remember what's important to you. You do. 
you remember lyrics to songs? Dude, I can quote you some songs from the 90s. Even today. Man, some R&B will come on, and Brittany's like, how do you even know that? Man, I remember songs. Some of you that are into sports, you know statistics. Man, you can quote some baseball. and You can quote some of those things. You will remember what's important to you. You remember the phone number. You may remember some stock quotes. You have a favorite player. You can tell me where they went to college. You can tell me everything about them. You'll remember what's important to you. Joshua 1.8 says, Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth, to meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous, prosperous and what? Successful. There it is again in Joshua. Same issue. Hey, if we do what this word says, if we follow this, we will be prosperous, we'll be successful, we'll be blessed. There's, those are promises there that we find in Scripture. i got to allow my, my, my mind to remember it. And the only way that I can do that is if I make it important to my life. And then the last one is this. I allow my actions to respond to it. In other words, I respond to what it is that I know that I need to do. I, I, I respond. I allow it to be part of my actions and, and what I do. James 1.22 in that, that verse there says, Do not merely listen and deceive yourselves, but to do what it says. It says, don't deceive yourselves. How do you deceive yourselves? You deceive yourselves when you think you've heard something and you got it. I've got it. I heard it. You begin to deceive yourselves. You know, we could talk about what it means to be a good dad, but then if we walk out of here and don't apply any of those principles, then we deceive ourselves. I got it. I'm good. Right? We, we talk about those things, and then we end up deceiving ourselves because we really don't know it. We've not taken time to allow it to be planted in us. And what we find, and we're going to get to this, for some of us in here perhaps, and you're in this position where you only believe the parts of the Bible you want to. And we're going to get to that when we talk about receiving the Word, but, but I, I'll believe the parts that are, that, that part's outdated. It's not significant anymore. That doesn't apply to 2020. I'm only going to live by this part of the Bible. We're going to get to that. But the Bible teaches. But let's take a moment and go back to that very first story that I gave you. The very beginning. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. It says this. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like the wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew against that house, but yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice, in other words, we hear it every Sunday, but we don't allow it to transform us. We hear it and say, I got it, I'm good. But we don't allow it to be planted in. It's like going to class and you hear the teacher, but you don't take any notes. And you're like, I got it. I heard it. I was, I was there. And then you go and it's t test time and you're like, I don't know what I don't know. It, it's not been planted in to, for, to remember, to call to memory. But everyone who hears these words and does not put them in the practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose. The winds blew and beat against the house and it fell with a great crash. My prayer for this series is this. I do not want that to be you. Some of you have been there. I've been there where we've built things on the sand and it didn't last. My prayer is that we would be in a position to where when the storm comes, that we don't crash. 
that we don't come unglued and fall apart completely. I don't want that to happen to you. And I'll say it again. We don't know what the future holds. We don't know what's going to happen in 2020. We don't know what the days ahead of us are going to look like. But if you don't have a solid foundation, I promise you, you're going to crumble. You're going to fall apart, and you're not going to make it. You've got to be with a solid foundation. So let me give you a way to, to remember that. You got the five senses, right? Where's Mason? Mason, come on up here for a minute. You, you, you look at your hand. Take, take, your, take your left or right hand and look at it. And I want you to look at your hand for a moment. Here, I'm going to give you a, a way to do this. The five senses, not only hearing, you're using your pinky as hearing, but then you go on from hearing to what? What Beyond hearing is what? Seeing. And then, right, you've got the, the speaking. You, know, you move on from what your, your mouth, what you're saying, to over to touching, right? Writing down, taking notes, studying, all of those things. And when we move across, we can have a grip on what it is that we're taking in. And when the storm comes and the tsunami comes, we won't fall apart. But here's what I'm afraid of, perhaps for some of us in this room, for some of you watching online. Here's what I'm afraid of. You hear a message on a Sunday, and you say, I've got it. I've got it. I'm good. And the Bible says that we deceive ourselves when we look in that manner of that just based on what we hear alone. I've got it. And here's what happens. I've got a hold of this in my life. And so as a result, based on what I hear alone, I grab a hold of it, and I deceive myself, and I say, I'm good because I've heard it, and now I know it, and so I'm good. And before I walk out of this parking lot, Satan's already tugging at it and pulling it, and look what happens. And before the day is over, you've lost it. And the sinking sand has shifted, and it, what you've built has crumbled. So I move a little bit further, and I say, well, I tell you what, this time, it's not only what I hear, but I'm going to add two fingers into what I see and so as a result, now I've got it, I'm good now, because it's based on what I hear, it's based on what I see, and I can grab onto it for a little bit, and it still pulls away. But when I take what I hear, what I see, what I talk about, what I'm studying, and how I'm living, and when I put it all into place, and I grab a hold of it, devil, you ain't going anywhere. It's not, you can't have it. Right? You see it? Here's where some of us are. And as a result, every week, oh me, I've got it together, but then by Wednesday it's fell apart. Thank you, Mason. Y'all give Mason a hand. <laughs> My prayer is that through this series that, that we would learn to grab a hold of our faith. Stop trying to hold on to it with a pinky because you're never going to get anywhere. And you're going to get frustrated and you're saying, I can't do this thing called Christianity. I can't do this thing walking in my faith because I fall apart every time. Could it be you're falling apart because you're not grounded? And could it be you're not grounded because all you're doing is hanging on to what I say every week and you're not taking it any further? And that's the first step. Next week, a couple of weeks, we're going to build on this. But the first one is this. You've got to realize I have got to get hold of my faith completely, not just a little bit, by what I hear, what I look at, what I hold on to, what I'm writing, what I'm speaking, how I'm living. All of those things add up for us to get a hold of our faith. And I promise you, when you do and the tsunami comes, I ain't going anywhere. I may lose friends. I may lose a loved one. I may face some tragedy in my life. I may go through some emotional things, and it's hard, but I ain't going anywhere because I've got a hold of it, and I'm grounded. And as a result of it being planted, God's going to bless me through this. God's going to see me through this. God's going to walk with me through this situation. I am not going anywhere because I'm grounded. That's my prayer for us as a church, as individuals. And so that goes beyond this. We have, listen, we have small groups. We have one really good one right now that DeMario's leading on Wednesday nights. Come be a part of it. It's an, it's an opportunity. 
In your home, it's an opportunity. You know, when you're studying, it's an opportunity around others. You've got to become grounded. With-